Hi, my name is Casey Shirell, and uh, I'm at Berkeley College here today to uh, do a little piece for Zildjian Score magazine. Uh, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about uh, specifically the symbols and how um, I would think of the symbols when I'm going to play a solo. Uh, there'll be um, first consideration of all these nice colors that we have here, the wonderful symbols that uh, are available to us these days and try to figure out ways that I can, in maybe simple terms, explain uh, some more complex ideas and um, help you get to the point where you can begin soloing on your own. Uh, the drum set is uh, primarily an accompany instrument, I'd say most of the time. So soloing is sort of the icing on the cake, but it's also uh, one of the more interesting things that we do as a drummer, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. point in time I'm, I'm probably more focused on, on my jazz playing than anything else but uh, as a teacher uh, I do draw from my experiences and um, try to help the students with whatever stylistic uh, interest they have and uh, of course we're in a groove society right now so it's uh, it, the stuff I hear the hip-hop and the rap and things are definitely coming out of uh, most of the musics that were, were my primary interest. to know your symbols. <laughs> Each style of music tends to uh, require a little bit different kind of symbol. For example, choice of ride symbols is, is a big deal because that's where we spend most of our time uh, playing jazz and many other styles of music. So if I'm playing in an organ trio, then uh, oftentimes uh, I would like, for example, a flat ride. Like I like flat rides in certain situations. This flat ride here is a nice 20 inch and it has uh, some rivets in it. And when I play this cymbal, it doesn't really build up, build up a lot. It does crash some, it has a nice dark crash. And what that does is it lays very right inside of what the organ group is doing, it fits very nicely with the, uh, the sound of pedal bass and what the B3 is doing. And I also find these cymbals to be terrific with uh, semi-hollow body jazz guitar playing, with a very clean uh, guitar sound. This is a terrific cymbal to use in that situation. And this one is quite, flex quite thin, that's why it's primarily good for smaller group I would say in that if you do crash into it, as you can see I've been playing it for a while, it's, it, it gets pretty big. So I might use a little thicker cymbal which has a little more stick definition in uh, a big band or a funk group or something like that where I need some more, a little more stick. But in a quieter situation it has a lot of undertones. What happens with that undertone is now it's very exposed so it seems like maybe kind of a noisy type of thing. But when you put an upright bass with it and maybe acoustic piano then those sounds all begin to blend together. So what it seems to me to do is take the acoustic instruments that are in the room and blend them together so they're more like one type of sound. The undertone uh, series of the cymbals, what's going to do that, those low sounds that are kind of dirty or a wash. A lot of roar, maybe too much but great for small band when you're not going to be playing loud. So it takes a nice touch, like you really can't lay into that cymbal. You really got to take the stick and pull the sound out of it in order to make that cymbal work. But when you can make that cymbal work, it's a beautiful cymbal, and I've had it in the studio. It records really fantastic. One thing to, to be aware of, if we're going to talk a little bit about soloing, um, and I'm going to start with a traditional jazz uh, example here, would be that um, the, 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 the word solo frightens a lot of students, um, even uh, like I teach a chart reading class here at the school. And if, it's, if there's a passage that, passage that says solo, uh, students tend to freak out a little bit because they think they have to play uh, a whole bunch, of, whole bunch of notes for that particular thing. Uh, so I say, look, if, if you can play time first, let's, let's start with the time feel. So uh, we'll start with a basic jazz feel, which as you know is a kind of spang, spang, lang example like this. Now 
Now, if I'm playing as an accompanist, then what I want to do is kind of lay down a bed of nice sounds with slight variations and melodic uh, complements, hopefully, to what's happening in the melody or with the soloists that I'm accompanying. So it might be something like this. Thinking that space is very important because now we have a rhythm section with several people that will be playing together. And I'm not really intending to dominate at this point. I just want to be a part of the team and, and work together. So here we're using our ride cymbal as the focus. The main part of the time is coming from the ride cymbal. As we want to develop some solo chops, then I suggest work out from the time. Instead of thinking about playing a lot of things on the, the, the drum part of the drum set, let's work out from the cymbal. So basically you're playing a time-oriented solo where maybe this is more or less an ostinato feel, bing, ding, a ding, a repetitive pattern. And, and then I'm starting to integrate the drums more and other cymbal sounds into the time feel. So at this point I can play more busy because maybe I have just a bass ostinato to play over that's playing a repetitive pattern for me to accompany or maybe I'm playing on a form to a tune. But I'm still using the cymbals to kind of keep the glue together and working from what I know which is how to play basic time. In a uh, field that's related to the jazz field that uh, we've been looking at is an Afro-Cuban 6-8, sometimes referred to as a bembe. But the basis of that rhythm would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And what I'm going to do here is a similar kind of idea in that I'm going to try to play an ostinato pattern here in that 6-8 pattern on the bell and then solo against that.
So a lot of times when I'm playing with a piano trio or something and there's a lot of nice dynamics going on, I might play a coming out of a eight bar phrase or something going into another one. I might play a swell and open the cymbal up and come back down so that I can have the cymbal in a sense, in essence, go in reverse. And you have to look at the bells. Each bell of, this, of every cymbal is very different uh, tonal idea. So um, if I play this one here, let's see what we got. If I use the other end of the stick, I get a much uh, less intense sound. And then there are also vibratos and things available. So. So you could use these effects when you're soloing, um, sometimes even bending the cymbal. This one's not quite as flexible as some of the others, but uh, sometimes you can get even a, even a bend out of it. Let's see. <laughs> so they're kind of fun to fool around with, and uh, especially the flexible ones, like something like this. Your little splashes. And... One thing that's a terrific uh, thing about uh, playing the drums is the opportunity to be a Zildjian artist. Uh, for me, that would go back to uh, around 1978 when uh, I called Zildjian up when I was playing uh, in Boston here. And uh, some of the representatives came down to the, to the concert and they invited me down to the factory. And uh, since then it's been uh, terrific to be involved in the development of the cymbals and watch the company evolve and uh, adapt to the, what the artists want. And uh, been great to be the recipient of uh, these wonderful instruments. Um, it's certainly a, a great tradition to be part of when I was a kid. Uh, like I think a lot of uh, drummers from my uh, particular age group would attest, uh, we used to get the little Zildjian book every couple of years that they, put, that they put out. And that was actually the place where I learned what drummers were doing. Uh, I would look in there and study, uh, you know, drummers' pictures and names and Davy Tuff or... Uh, of course, everybody knew, you know, the big names, Buddy Rich and, and the rock players that were, were there. But, but the, a little more obscure players that were not in the limelight, which were very major players, of course, as I learned more about them, uh, I learned first through that book. So I would get their names and then I'd go to the record store and spend a day sifting through records and uh, finding these guys who played the drums. So it was, a, it was a great educational as well as promotional piece that was going on in those days. So to... Uh, you know, evolve and, and continue to play music and be a part of that great tradition and get to know uh, Armand and Craigie and the Zildjian family has been, uh, has been a blast and uh, definitely an honor. Yeah, thank you.